To those of you who earn a good salary in a low-stress job, what do you do? Story 1. I guess my job is not low-stress or high-paying to most people, but it checks both boxes for me as a single 24-year-old man. I work in rural EMS in Canada. My schedule is 96 hours on, followed by 96 hours off. In other words, I work for four straight days and then get four days off. I live in a big city, but the town that I work in is one hour and 40 minutes away. So my commute is not terrible when you consider that I only need to make the drive once every four days. When I actually am at work, I can do whatever I want as long as we don't get a call. My company sets us up with a nice staff house, satellite TV, Wi-Fi, and a decent gym. I spend my days playing video games with my coworkers. There are four of us on shift, watching TV and movies, cooking, eating, working out, taking a nap, shooting the crap with my coworkers, etc., if we do get a call, we have eight minutes to respond. So I can lounge around in pajamas all day if I want, and if I need to run an errand in town, I can usually get it done without getting more than eight minutes away from the station. The calls can be kind of crappy, lots of highway accidents and farming accidents, but I find the really crappy ones are few and far between. Most calls are just driving people who don't feel well to the hospital. But I do enjoy the tough calls because they challenge me to make quick decisions and use my skills. In 96 hours, we usually average about five or six calls. However, I have literally worked 96 hours without a single call on more than one occasion. Regardless, I never take the work home with me. I make around $70,000 per year with good benefits, and there are lots of opportunities to pick up extra shifts, which are paid at double time. <laughs> Neat. If I ever get bored of medicine in the U.S., I'm just going to drop my letters and be EMS in rural Canada. Story 2 I am a medical radiation technologist. I think my job is one of the least stressful. We don't work long hours like nurses and doctors, and the only main priority is to take diagnostic images of patients, but once we're done, they're taken away by porters, so we spend little time on patients. At the end of the day, when we finish our hours, we just head home and relax. I find it a relaxing job. Gets easier the better your skill set, and there's usually people to help you. This is strictly for x-rays only, not CT or MRI, of which is more stressful since you're on a schedule. I kind of like my job. Nuclear medicine tech here, specifically positron emission tomography. Our scans are typically 20 to 30 minutes long. An old colleague of mine would get through half a novel in an average workday. No overtime, weekends, or on call. Only stressful when equipment fails. Story 3. Deckhand on a tugboat in New York, $385 a day. Next promotion to mate is $580 a day. Captain is $670 a day. We live in the boat and go up and down the East Coast, mostly the Northeast, for two weeks. Then we get two weeks off of work. Most of the time we eat free food and watch satellite TV. I bring my Xbox and play a couple hours every day using my phone as a hotspot, literally straight chillin' for two weeks with friends. Oh yeah, full benefits, my 401k match, $1 for $1, up to 6% starting. Hmm, my father was a deckhand on a tugboat. He said he decided it was the job for him when he realized every boat had a bunk bed. Story 4. I'm an assistant for a really high-end real estate agent. First few months was stressful, constantly trying to work out how he operates, but now I have it worked out, I get everything done in advance for him, and spend most of my day chatting crap with others in the office, drinking coffee, and going on Reddit. I freaking despise working. I've always hated it. I thought I would grow out of it, but at 27, I just seem to dislike it even more. So to find a job that I can be excellent at with minimum effort and stress that pays me well is a freaking dream. I also start early and don't take lunch, so I'm home in time for my doggo. How? Story 5. Operator at a nuke plant. Make up to $180,000 depending on how much overtime I work. If I don't work overtime, I'll make $140,000 and only work 32 to 48 hours a week. It's shift work, which can take a toll, but it's a union job and we're treated very well. It's low stress, in a sense, where if you can pass the monthly exams demonstrating your knowledge of nuclear plant operations, you shouldn't be concerned. But if you're not as book smart as the rest of the crew, you can have some problems passing the initial training you receive and the continuing. So moral of the story, if you can pass the training, it's very low stress. Heck, if Homer Simpson could do it. Story 6. College professor, 
If you find a field you love, you get to talk about your favorite thing for 15 hours a week, earn the income of a full-time job, and get several months off a year. Quotes because you use that time for grading and prepping stuff for the next semester, and of course you work longer than 15 hours a week, but what that work consists of varies wildly. If community college, it's pretty chill, mostly meetings and waiting for students to see you, research positions vary in responsibilities, Specialized schools could be chill or more demanding, but there's potential for the majority of your time outside the classroom to be up to you and how you spend it. Story 7. I'm a truck driver, home every day, just listen to music and watch the sunrise. Make about $80,000. Could make much more if I put in the hours. The worst is having people complain about you existing. Just gotta have a frickum mentality. I wouldn't recommend truck driving to others, though. It's very hard to get a good-paying job. I got very lucky and had a home daily company hire me the moment I got my commercial driver's license. Long-haul drivers actually make less than home daily drivers, which nobody seems to understand. Story 8. Friend of mine makes 45 grand a year in marketing. His entire job is making a newspaper, TV, internet ad saying, who would like to try a new product? Sitting on his butt for several days, waiting, then when people respond, he sorts them by if they qualify or not. Guys can't test women's deodorant, etc. That is the end of his job. Everything else is done by another group. He has hours of paid free time he uses to code and do side projects. He went to school for eight years for math to get this job. Story 9. Quality assurance slash quality control on electrical and mechanical projects. It is simple. Read the original proposal and the 100% specifications and don't let the subcontractors waver from them. Keep the customer happy by showing them you are all about giving them what they paid for. It has its moments where it can get pretty hectic, but 90% of the time it is laid back and stress-free. I am noticing QA seems to be one of the main jobs on this post. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 10. Summer job? I was a tree planter all through nine years of school. After a few summers' experience, I was making about $16,000 and spending almost nothing in two months. If you can handle the weather and have the right attitude, it was no stress at all. Wake up, eat, put trees in the ground, eat, sleep, repeat. Now that I have a master's and 15 years' experience in my real job, I still don't make quite as much as I did back then. Story 11. On site, on call technicians, 95% of the time, nothing is going on. When something breaks, it's usually back online in about 20 minutes. Maybe five days a year you need to work on something all shifts. Rest of the time, you monitor the system and find other things to do, like learning how to code and automate the boring part of the job. Story 12. Just here to say I love these threads. It's always soothing to know I have options in the future if the need be. On the other hand, reading all of these easy, well-paying jobs makes me feel even more worthless than I do already because I feel as though I can't even do the simplest ones without issues. Story 13. Oh, all of these are the complete opposite of my job. High stress and low wage. Stay in school, kids. Or don't. Leave the city and find a nice government job in a small town where your house payment is $400 a month and you live like a king off $50,000 a year. Story 14. Firefighter, when I say low stress, I mean that when my shift is over, I don't have any looming deadlines or unfinished work waiting for me the next day. When I'm working, there can be moments of pretty high stress. It's not chronic stress, though, just bursts of occasional crazy high stress. Story 15. I'm a sushi chef. The work I do carries some stress, but the restaurant is completely laid back. Just so everyone knows, the restaurant industry is generally quite stressful, and anyone looking for a low-stress workplace should probably avoid it altogether. Kudos to OP for finding success and avoiding the insanity. Story 16. I sit behind a desk and design do-it-yourself home theater and automation systems. People send in their floor plans, and I put little speakers, TVs, etc., images where they should install stuff. And I troubleshoot the systems over the phone, too easiest dang money I've ever made, and I get paid good. Story 17. Quality assurance slash data analysis. I did user acceptance testing for four years before switching to a new job. It paid well, it was super low stress, and I hated my the entire time. It might technically be an easy job, 
but the endless monotony of it was soul-destroying. I would not recommend it. Story 18. I make the Coca-Cola products that go into the freestyle machines. Over 60K with overtime. We make one to three batches per shift, and that's just following a recipe. Very little stress, as we have few chances to make mistakes. I have a lot of downtime as well. Story 19. In-house graphic designer for a pretty large retail company. We stay busy, but there isn't any of the stress that comes with working at an agency and having to please several different clients or worrying about getting enough work as a freelancer. Story 20. I ultrasound hearts and vascular systems in a doctor's office for $35 an hour. Super laid back. If you're fast enough, half your time is free time. I manage to trade stocks, read, learn something new, keep extra time filled with something interesting, etc. Story 21. I'm an attorney, civil litigation specifically. The stress is killing me. Or maybe it's the hours. Perhaps it's the debt. I don't know. But I am here to see what comes up. Uh, seeing these posts always discourages me, as I aspire to become an attorney. Story 22. I'm a software developer. It's normally low stress, better than site ops who have to respond to site down emergencies and such. I can agree. Software engineer at a good, stable company equals awesome. Software engineer at a startup equals stressful. Story 23. It's a good wage, not a good salary, but I drive a garbage transfer truck at night. My total package is over $120,000 a year, but it's heavily weighted towards benefits like lifetime retiree medical coverage and pension. Story 24. I'm a civilian security guard on an army base in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by thousands of square miles of empty desert. I make $60,000 this year for watching tumbleweeds and jackrabbits. Story 25. Data analysis for a local branch of a very large national healthcare provider. Began via a temp agency, then hired on for 1.8 times what I was earning in retail after a decade. Story 26. I am an illustrator, but as the senior producer pointed out, low stress does not equal low effort. I am always polishing the craft, regardless of if I'm being paid or not. Story 27. Barber for 18 years. I started off in cosmetology school and went back to be a barber. Woman's hair is fun for a while, but I love cutting a fresh, sharp fade. Story 28. I sleep train newborns. I work nights and only interact with mom and dad for about 10 to 15 minutes. After that, it's just me and the baby. I love my job. Story 29. I design circuits for avionics guidance systems. If you know what you're doing, it's low stress, and I'm 23 making 75 grand in the low-cost Midwest. Story 30. My boss is not a... I think that matters more than the actual job. A lot of truth here. The people you work with make or break the job, at least in my experience. Story 31. I'm an electronics engineer for an automotive OEM. Pretty interesting and fun. I like solving problems and designing stuff. Story 32. Retirement actuary. 90K per year plus bonus. Five years in the industry so far. Lots of interesting projects and minimal stress. Story 33. I'm a civil servant, specifically a staff analyst. I deal mainly with contract administration. Seriously, take the tests. Story 34. Furniture sales. I consider a good salary over $100,000 per year with no previous education or experience required. Story 35. Production welder. Finish quota in four hours. Sit on a pal scrolling through Reddit for another four. Good game. Easy. Story 37. I drive coal trains. I can literally sleep 70% of my shift some nights. I earned $147,000 last year. Story 38. Put strawberries in 500 gram punnets. I get good pay and a limited amount of strawberries. Story 39. I change light bulbs and very minor electrical work for $24 an hour at a VA hospital. Story 40. Edit textbooks online. Have worked from home for over 15 years. Story 41. Sysadmin. If it ain't broke, I don't fix it, especially on a Friday. Story 42. Waiter in a high-end steakhouse. It's only stressful for about an hour. Story 43. Green coffee buyer. I decide what coffee our roastery buys. Story 44. Reading this makes me freaking hate everyone in this thread. Story 45. Librarian. 
best job ever. Story 46. Professional Freelance Dungeons and Dragons Master. Basically, people pay me to run their sessions online for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It's fun, and I make a decent amount of money. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.